And welcome in to another edition of Music Fanimal here on Fanimal Radio. I'm Tony Lombardi, and my special guest this week, straight from Virginia Beach, Joe Harlan. Joe, how are Tony, you, buddy? Thank you so much for having me. Welcome home. Uh, it's good to be here. Welcome home. So how did you end up in Virginia Beach? Uh, that is a long, sordid tale. Uh, but we like sordid tales on Music uh, Fanimal. Uh, well, uh, basically, I went down there to help start a church. Okay. <laughs> so maybe not so sorted. But uh, yeah, I went down there to help start a church. I was a music minister for about 10 years. Okay. And uh, so that was about 20 years ago. I went down there with my wife, and uh, that's where we ended up making our, our life. And now we've got two kids and uh, a dog and everything else in Virginia Beach. So. Now, I got to know you just, I met you at Libs Grill. Right. And you play there probably once a month, maybe? No, you know, I get there probably once every three or four months. Okay, so it's that long. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. All yeah. right, well, see, your, your stuff just resonates with me. It just, <laughs> it just, it just stays I, with you <laughs> like a bad cold. It just kind of hangs on. <laughs> well, no, I'm going to leave it there. So. But no, it's, it's, so we, I met you there, and I found out that you come back and forth from Virginia Beach, I guess, yes. every three or four months. Yes, sir. So you had a gig last night. We're recording this on Saturday March the, today's the 9th, right? Yeah. Yes. So, and you had a gig on March 8th at Libs Grill in Wood, at Maple Lawn. Maple Lawn, yes. Maple Lawn. And that was wonderful. It is, uh, it's a neat place. If you took the Libs Grill in Perry Hall and blew it up to a proportion that people could actually fit into, <laughs> this is, uh, uh, it's a bigger version. It is. And uh, it's a little more upscale maybe, but uh, still just an amazing place. Had a great time last night. Um, the staff there is wonderful, the food's great, and the crowd was wonderful, and uh, made some friends and fans, so, but I'm a little, a little tired. But. <laughs> well, talk about playing the scene in Virginia Beach. I know you get around down there a little bit, too, don't you? Some of the oh, yeah, pubs. Yeah. And... Uh, the scene in Virginia Beach is really neat, man. It's, um, there's a million places to play. Uh, there's a lot of bigger festival-type venues where a lot of national artists come in and out of too. Okay. Got the Norva and uh, in Telos uh, Pavilion and all kinds of stuff. But uh, there's, a, there's a million people playing music down there too. So it's a very big, diverse music scene down there. And um, I play there probably 65% of the time. Uh, otherwise, I'm up in like Williamsburg or uh, further up in Newport News, Richmond, up here in Baltimore, or down in North Carolina. So I try and get around the whole uh, mid-Atlantic. But um, Virginia Beach is home, and the, the music scene there is, is wonderful. A lot of great, just great, great, talented people down there, I'm, as I'm sure there are up here as well. And I see you haven't lost your loyalties. I haven't. Uh, that's why I've been on antidepressants for so long. <laughs> I say, they've really challenged your loyalties lately, right? I tell but at you least what, they have a plan now. They do have a plan. I tell you, I'd love to talk sports with you sometimes, okay. sit around and talk sports. But, uh, yeah, man, uh, I love what they're doing, you know. Uh, say whatever you want about the Angelos family and their ownership or whatever. I think this is the perfect way to go. Just rebuild from soup to nuts and get her done. and Because I, I, I love what the Astros have done right. and the Cubs have done. and just building it up from the, the ground up again. And um, I don't think the Orioles have ever, ever really done that. They've always gone out and found talent, brought it in, and now they're just really, really trying to develop. So I'm excited about this season, even though I know we're going to get our ass handed to us <laughs> most of the time. It'll be fun watching it now. As opposed to... You're seeing young kids develop, and you see what the yeah, future may or may not be. So, so it's, so it's so what great. they should have done a few years back. It, it really is. It, it really is. And uh, But water under the bridge. Water under the bridge. And those guys that we've had for the past four, five, six years uh, with the skipper, with Buck, I mean, they gave us all they had, and uh, wonderful, wonderful, uh, wonderful teams we had there. A lot of excitement. So, yeah, I am I'm still loyal. I bleed... Red or uh, orange in the summer and purple in the winter. So there you go. There you go. So you're right at home. Yes, sir. So, so talk a little bit about how you got to be a musician and what inspired you to get into the business. Well, I was just, I was just born with a musical bone. You know, I just ever since I was a little little baby, just love love music. And uh, my parents, when they were together, uh, always had music going on. Uh, Neil Diamond, you know, Hot August Night. 
uh, I would just run around in little circles, you know, and make a bigger circle. You know, as kids dance, we just, all we know what to do is run around. So I was just uh, crazed by music from a very, like from two on. And my mom listened to a lot of Motown and soul. My dad introduced me to the Beatles and the Stones. And uh, they, were, they were divorced, so I get my Motown and soul during the week and my rock and roll on the weekends with the dad. <laughs> And uh, but no one from my family's musical at all, either side, uh, and they swear I'm not adopted. But uh, <laughs> I, I got into music. I you know I started really singing and playing when I was uh, maybe 14, 15 years old, and then from there, against my you know mother's wishes <laughs> and everyone else's uh, better judgment, I went and went and tried to strike off a career in music. And uh, it's it's done me well so far, but yeah, always, always, just I was just kind of born that way. You mentioned Neil Diamond, the Beatles, and the Stones. Anybody else inspire you in terms of being a musician? Back then or now? Either way. Oh, jeez. Oh man, it's a it's a a list too long to yeah. to mention. But uh, um, I've always liked that that soulful, manly. Blah, kind of voice so I've always tried to emulate that a bit so growing up you know in the 80s it was uh, you know Seeger and uh, Mellencamp Lord when I first heard Mellencamp uh, mid 80s right everything's keyboards the flock of seagulls and then all of a sudden right on the radio you hear you know Jack and Diane went Oh my God, that's an acoustic guitar. Somebody's actually playing a real instrument right. finally, and so I was really inspired by by him. And um, but nowadays, you know, musicians like um, Cocker, uh, Paul Rogers, uh, and all that he's done, and how he is now, just just still still an amazing vocalist and performer. Uh, a guy out of uh, Australia by the name of Jimmy Barnes. Uh, I don't know if you know anything about Jimmy, but I do not. He uh, is an old in excess song. Uh, uh, Everybody have a good time tonight. Rock and roll music gonna play all night. Anyway, Jimmy sings background vocals on that, and uh, he tried to make it here in America, but he never did. But just just amazing voice. So look up Jimmy Barnes. He's amazing. They call him Barnsy in uh, Australia. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so Barnsy and Seeger and Cocker and just just it's just to name a few. Yeah. He said Paul Rogers. He's my favorite singer. Oh, my God. And I saw yes. on your Facebook page that you do Fire and Water from Free. Yes. He was, his original band. I think that Paul Rogers, when they did All Right Now, which went to a number one hit, was 19 years old. I believe it. That's, like, crazy. Uh, well, he, you know, he was just one of those guys, man, that just, he's always been so consistent vocally. Um, his voice is And Mellencamp's a huge fan of his. Oh, of course. He's yeah. always fighting. Why is he, hell, he's not in the effing Hall of Fame? Oh, oh my God, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Right. Now, is Bad Company in the Hall? Nope. <sighs> that, that's all political, man. It's just yeah. crazy how that works. But Paul Rogers really inspires me, um, not only because of his history with Free and Bad Company and everything else he's done with Jimmy Page and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, but he's now, I believe, in his late 60s. He may even be 70. And still rocks it out every night, hasn't lost an inch of voice, can still hit all the notes and, you know, sing all the songs and, you know, went out there and had the balls to perform with Queen for a couple of years. That was ballsy. Uh, doing Freddie Mercury stuff. I mean, geez. And, and pulled it off. Did it his way, you know. Um, but he really inspires me because now... The person of, uh, you know, my age, uh, poor <laughs> Um uh, That's really inspiring, man, because I, you know, I was kind of a late bloomer when it comes to this, and you know, playing music and stuff and bars and clubs and the bigger scene. So, just to see that, it's like, yeah, it's doable. I've got a long career still ahead of me, you know. And he inspires me through his lifestyle and just how he takes care of himself, his body, his mind, everything else. So I'm rambling. Sorry. It's good stuff. Good stuff. He's my man. Oh, I see. Paul Rogers all day oh long. Oh, my gosh. It's just amazing, yeah. So I was down at this place. It used to be called the Sandbar in Pasadena. 
And I think when I went down there, it was, a place, it was called Daytona's. And I went down there because somebody said that Paul Rogers was playing there. And this, it's like a regular old bar. It's now closed. I think it's a CVS now. <laughs> okay. so, so I go down there not believing a word. I said, okay, maybe there's a Paul Rogers that's playing. It can't be that Paul Rogers. Not at this place. So I walk in, and you see these signs. that say, no smoking event. And this was back when you could smoke in bars. Yeah, okay. And I'm thinking, oh, that's cool because I don't, I don't smoke and I don't like the smell of it. So anyway, we go in there. And I'm thinking, this might be real, because maybe he's trying to protect his voice. Right. Sure enough, I hear the opening chords to All Right Now, and here comes Paul Rogers across the stage. I said, I'll be damned. <laughs> <laughs> I can't be- Why is he here? You know, I felt like the Billy Joel song, What Are You Doing Here? You know, yeah. Like, but he was... What year was he, this? This was probably around 2000. Good grief, man. He, that's, that's crazy. It is. You're saying it's a little bar, right? Yeah, probably 300 people. That'd be amazing. That'd be amazing. I remember seeing BB um, King in a very small venue like that uh, at the Norva in uh, Virginia Beach, and I was probably from here to your uh, sound guy and uh, Blake. <laughs> yeah. That's Sorry, Blake, Blake behind the camera. <laughs> it's early in the morning, and I'm bad with names anyway. <laughs> Blake is wearing slippers, by the way. I just want you to know. Put some pants on, Blake. Damn. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, anyway, yeah, I remember seeing B.B. King in that kind of venue, and I was probably from here to there, too, and it was amazing. But that's really cool. I lo- yeah, love Paul Rogers. Love Paul Rogers. So you're going to do three songs for us today. What's the first one? Uh, I'm not sure yet. We're going to go to break, right? Yeah. <laughs> I think I'll do an original. Coming well prepared. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was just trying to handle all the questions. Um, <laughs> well, I got a lot more questions for you. I'll probably do an original song, might do a little Seeger for you, right. and then Lord knows what else. We'll see what my voice can handle at this hour in the morning. Okay. Take a quick break. We come back. Joe Heilman on The Voice. Just when you think he's had enough When rumors spread he's returned to dust Somehow he'll get back Standing down at the finish line There's more in the tank than they ever dreamed of Treachery win every time. Age and treachery right down the line. Ooh, right down the line. Mm, all the ladies say he's smooth. The touch of gray and nothing to lose. Ooh, mark my words well. You bet against him, you better not tell. Ooh, age and treachery win every time. Treachery right down the line. It's a treachery until the day of reckoning, yeah. It's a treachery win every time. Great song, Joe. Age and Treachery. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us about the inspiration behind that one. Age and Treachery. Um, Age and Treachery was written for guys like, like me. Uh, a little bit older, hopefully by this time, a little bit wiser, um, but, but still very much vibrant and full of life and embracing life, but now embracing it with a, <laughs> a few more smarts, hopefully, and 
Uh, you know, it's I kind of wrote it with a Bob Seger-esque kind of vibe. It's funny when I play in bars and clubs and stuff and I do something like Against the Wind or uh, Still the Same or something like that. Every guy over 40, I have all their attention immediately. It just resonates with the, the guy who's been there, done that. So I wanted to write a song for those guys, you know, just to make them go, oh, yeah, yeah, that's me. You know, I still got us, so, uh, you know, still very much full of vigor and vim. And so that's what Ancient Treachery is about. It's about uh, you don't don't mess with the old dog. <laughs> So that, that was a real bit. life situation that oh, inspired yeah, you to write yeah, a song. Yeah, it's about me, you know. It's about everybody. It's about all us, all us guys. Are older on, oh, on, the, on the other on, side, slightly <laughs> on the darker side of a certain age. Yeah, on the back nine. On the back nine. All right, sounds good. <laughs> so, so I guess real life situations are what inspire you to write. Yes, yes, they do. Uh, songwriting for me has always been a, a passion. Um, uh, I do. I've done it more in the past than I do now because I don't have quite as much time to write as I used to, although I do have uh, this uh, new uh, EP coming out and uh, called Age and Treachery. And, um, but uh, songwriting has always been a passion. I've always loved the craft of songwriting. I started writing when I was you know, 15 years old. As soon as I picked up a guitar, I started writing songs. You know? I'd learn two new chords and write a song with it. They weren't very good, but uh, you know, we got the job done at the end of the day. And so that's evolved over time. And, and when I was a music pastor, I was writing all original songs for our church. And um, some of those songs are still floating around there, it's floating around out there in the ether, getting played by uh, different churches and, and things. So that's very honoring and very cool. But yeah, I love uh, songwriting, and uh, it's, it's, a, it's a fun, fun passion. I just love the, the uh, artistry of it. So. Talk about the EP and where people can find it. Well, when it gets done <laughs> in a couple of weeks, cross your fingers, uh, people will be able to find Asian Treachery everywhere. It'll be on iTunes, it'll be on Amazon, it'll be on Rhapsody, it'll be on CD Baby, it'll be, it'll be everywhere. And it'll contain um, five or six songs, um, and uh, I'm really looking forward to it. It's some of my best stuff ever. And it's been a while since I've been able to really say that. Um, I do have another CD available called What It Takes, and they can find that everywhere as well. But uh, this, is, this is a step above. It's, it's really, um, I think I've really come back to a, a, a really sweet spot in nice. the song. Right? So, yeah. so you've seen The Voice before, right? I have seen The Voice. A fan or no? I do. I, I enjoy it. Uh, I don't get to watch it uh, all the time. But there was a point in time where my, my daughter was just obsessed with it. Uh, she's very musical as well. Did she say, Dad, you got to do this? No, no. Um, she'd normally say, Dad, shut up. I'm trying to watch the show. <laughs> uh, you know, because, yeah, you know, I've, I've been a musician for a long, long time. And I've, you know, I have uh, have a degree in music and have, you know, uh, taught guitar and voice and stuff like that. So it's... Uh, it, it, you know, the, the voice is such an interesting thing because as I watched it, year by year, the few years I did, they just got younger and younger. I mean, so-and-so is 15 years old and, man, just can sing, 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 sing. So I'm, I, I think it's a great show. It's a great way for um, folks to get discovered. On the other hand, it does have its, its weird downside, you know, because... Uh, I think it was Dave Grohl who said, can you imagine Bob Dylan on The Voice? Right. You know? <laughs> or even Tom Petty for that matter. Yeah, right? they would have never given him a shot, never given him a chance, but you've got two of the greatest songwriters and performers of all time there who uh, would have never, by The Voice's standards, uh, even, been, even been heard. Right. So. You mentioned before that when you play, or the inspiration behind Age and Treachery, yeah. that... You play still the same or against the wind, and yeah. you get the older guys turning their heads and paying yeah. attention. Flip side of that, as you're playing, and you can see everybody's just in their own little world chatting away, mm -hmm. does that ever bother you when they're not paying enough attention to you? No. No. Um, at this point, I'm kind of used to it, <laughs> which is maybe sad to say. But... Uh, 
No, I, I look at it two ways. Number one, it's the nature of the beast. Um, number two, I look at it as uh, a certain challenge, you know, like, because, hmm. you know, uh, after you've been playing in bars and clubs for a long time like I have, and I'm sure the other guys who come in here can attest to it, you, you begin to learn to read a crowd. You begin to learn, okay, we got these folks over here, a couple guys maybe in their early 50s, I don't know what they're, and then we got some, some girls over here maybe in their early 20s, okay, I kind of know what they're looking for, and everyone in between, and, and so um, I'm profiling the whole time. <laughs> like, well, that's smart. Mm, yeah, okay. So, um, so my challenge for me every night is to make them turn their heads. And I look at it as a game, you know, see if I can see how many of these folks I can win. And um, typically I do a fairly good job. You know, I play a lot of diverse venues. I play everything from dive bars to country clubs and everything in between. And... Um, fortunate enough to have a diverse enough um, palette of music where, you know, if I need to just play for a dive bar full of bikers, got it. If I'm, you know, it's now 1.30 in the morning and uh, all the 20-somethings are rolling into the local hot scene, okay, I've got enough to get me through there, too. Right. So um, I look at it as a challenge. I, I, I don't take it personally whatsoever because, you know, it's, it is the nature of the beast. Is there a song that you can't play enough of? In other words, you never get tired of playing it. You know, that's a good question. Um, and people always ask me that. Like, what's your favorite song? And that kind of thing. And um, I don't really have a favorite song per se. A anything from Seeger, though, I always enjoy. Um, anything from back in the day when I was, you know, a kid coming up, I, I, I love to play. Um, you know, there's some stuff back in the day that I'd, I'd prefer to skip, but... Uh, well, what are some of those songs? <laughs> like, do somebody, I, do maybe, I have maybe, to say? <laughs> well, yeah. It's only a million people out there watching. Okay. <laughs> we in hope so. In case you come to a show, don't request these songs. No, uh, I'll, I'll do these songs anytime. Um, but um, I'm not a real big Jimmy Buffett fan. Um, especially of a certain, you know, song of his that's huge, uh, the Jimmy Buffett song, um, <laughs> Margarita. <laughs> and, um, you know, you always get Brown Eyed Girl. Um, you know, it's so funny, though. I'm not a big fan of that song, but I love Van Morrison, don't get me wrong. Um, and I think it's one of his greatest songs ever, and I was a huge fan of it growing up, but when everyone asks for it over and over and over again, you get a little tired of it. I'm sure there are musicians who feel the same way. However, it's hysterical to me um, that I'll try and learn all these new songs, you know, for, for the late night crowd, for the 20-somethings coming in, for Blake. For Blake, right? <laughs> Trying to learn the hot new songs for you, brother. Comes in with his slippers. He's got his damn slippers on. He's just chilling. <sighs> this generation, where do we go wrong, Tony? Anyway. They got to figure it out. <laughs> they must. I, I'd be wearing my slippers if I knew it was appropriate. Apparently it is. All right. Uh, but, uh, you know, trying to learn all these hip new songs, you know. And invariably, I'll play all those hip new songs and won't really get much response. And then I'll just go on and do my thing. And then someone will come up to me, typically anywhere from the age range of 21 to 26, and say, can you play Brown Eyed Girl? Will you play Margaritaville? Will you do, uh, you know, Mellencamp? Will you do um, Marley? I'm like, why am I wasting my time? Learning all these new songs when all you guys want to hear is the old stuff. Uh, it's, it's really discombobulating sometimes, but they have access to stuff that they're so broad, you know. This new generation, they have everything at their fingertips, and they just, they have access to everything, and they listen to everything, and they love everything, which is wonderful. Uh, but I could have saved a lot of time <laughs> if I just uh, stuck with what I already know. So right, there you so. go. Uh, that's a long answer to a very simple, short question. Sorry. So I'm going to stay in your sweet spot. I'm going to ask you to play a Seeger song. Yeah, no worries. All right, let's take another break. Bob Seeger by Joe Heilman. It seems like yesterday But it was long ago Jeannie was loveless, she was the queen of my nights There in the darkness with the radio playing low And 
the secrets that we shared And the mountains that we moved Crawled like a wildfire out of control Till there was nothing left to burn and nothing left to hold And I remember what she said to me How she swore that it never would end Remember I see hell Oh sometimes Wish I didn't know now What I didn't know then Against the wind We were running against the wind We were young and strong But we were running Against the wind Roll slowly past And I found myself alone Surrounded by strangers I thought were my friends I found myself further and further From my home And I guess I lost my way There were so many roads I was living to run And running to live Never worrying about paying or even how much I owed Moving eight miles a minute for months at a time Breaking all the rules that would be I began to find myself searching Searching for shelter again and again Against the wind Something against the wind I found myself Seeking shelter Against the wind Well those drifters days Are past me now I've got so much more To think about Deadlines and commitments what to leave in, what to leave out Against the wind I'm still running against the wind I'm older now but still running against the wind Well, I'm older now and still running Against the wind Against the wind Against the wind Still running Against the wind Running against the wind Against the wind I'm still running Against the wind Running against the wind Against the wind See the young man run Against the wind The cowboys ride against the wind. Against the wind. Ride, 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 ride. Oh yeah, against the wind, baby. Against the wind. Thank you for playing that. You're I welcome. Lo I love that song. I do too. It's a great song. I play it all day. A buddy of mine has this boat, and it seems like I always dial that up on my iPod because it's, it's if we're coming back, and it's nice, even pace, oh, yeah. moonlight, oh. and it's it's just against the wind. It's and Shame so, on the Moon is another one we played oh, that time. One of, yeah, one of my dad's favorite songs is Shame on the Moon. That's, um, and I never appreciated Shame on the Moon until I got older, and now um, I listen to it and I go, oh, just... It just resonates. He was such, is, was, uh, such an old soul, you know, just in his 20s and 30s writing these songs that just have this vintage quality to them that just speak of life. It's just wonderful. Uh, Night Moon was another one. Just... Oh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yes. <laughs> <laughs> when they go into the thunder and lightning and it slows down so and then good. it comes back with that little slow pace. Yeah, that's it. That's it. 
That's the one, baby. Love that. Okay, some more questions for you. Go. Talking about iPods. Yes, sir. Most embarrassing songs on your iPod. Okay. I told you it was a list. Um, <laughs> I've got, uh, I, I looked this morning when you sent me the questions, and um, I got uh, You Sexy Thing on there by Hot Chocolate, <laughs> which is, I don't care what anybody says, it's one of the greatest fun guitar riffs of all time. Uh, I got some Barry Manilow on there, a little bit of Mandy, Weekend in New England. Uh, I've got some uh, Bee Gees on there, uh, Jive Talking. And uh, Nights on Broadway. I've got some ABBA on there. So far, I've hit on every one of those that you just said in my uh, iPod as yeah, well. Yeah, uh, and I don't know how embarrassing that. I mean, um, uh, yeah, man. Uh, yeah, I've got a little Ed Sharon on there. That's embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> I think my daughter snuck that on there, actually. So, but. Uh, Throwing your daughter under the bus. Nah, nah she's, she's so cool, man. <laughs> she's cool. Yeah, she's, uh, she's 18 now. She's. Graduating, and we're getting ready for college. Nice. Yeah, yeah, so. I just took my daughter to see Fleetwood Mac. Oh, I we, saw that you did that. We had a great time. Now, who was filling in for Lindsey Buckingham? Because I know he's been ill. Two guys. Okay. Neil Finn from Crowded House. Holy crap. And Mike Campbell from Tom Petty's band. I would rather see that, actually, than <laughs> Lindsey Buckingham. <laughs> wow. They did a great job. Neil filled in with a lot of the vocals that right. Lindsey would handle it. And... And Mike was tearing it up. Good grief. That's they, like an all-star show. They were, they were tight. It oh was fun. Oh, my gosh. Well, it, there was less, like when I saw them play with Lindsey, there was more acoustic guitar solos. Okay. Because yeah. he likes to pick with that. You know? he's, he, oh, man, he's amazing. He really is. So I, I kind of missed that. Right. But other than that, it would, if I closed my eyes, I wouldn't have known. Oh, man, that is so Because Lindsey can't sing the way he used to be able to sing. Right. Right. But Neil, actually, he did Don't Dream It's Over as well. <laughs> Great show. Wow. Well, if they come so. down near Virginia Beach, man, i got to go see that. That's you amazing. Um, I know Lindsay has been ill. Yes. And uh, has had some vocal problems because of it. But, um, man, to see those guys. The thing about Lindsay Buckingham that I really appreciate is he's one of those guitar players, I think I'm right on this, who doesn't use a pick. So everything he does is with his fingers and his fingernails and just and he has a certain type of guitar and a certain sound that you just like oh that's Lindsay you know uh, but uh, Mike Campbell sheesh Neil Finn amazing that's an all-star show yeah it was a good show I'll so, show all right uh, perfect go. album perfect album all right uh, I'm uh, gonna for those who go ahead they need to understand what we mean by perfect album and that is if you were sitting at a turntable you put an album on the turntable drop the needle in you don't get up to change any songs because you don't want to. You just like every song. So that's mm -hmm. the perfect album. Okay. And it's different for everybody. It is. It is. Um, all right. So I'm going to go. I've got two or three. Uh, pr probably obscure ones. This isn't. Uh, August and Everything After by the Counting Crows. Mm, great record. Uh, Never so even approached that again, though. No, never. Um, well, they took, they must have taken five or six years between their first album and their second album, um, but never came close to that again. But what an amazing record. Um, <laughs> there's, a, there's an obscure band uh, called The Insiders from the mid-'80s, and they did an album called Ghost on the Beach, which I absolutely loved. And uh, that's, that's Soup to Nuts, a great album. There was one more. Uh, New Radicals, so you've been brainwashed too. It was the only album they ever did, he ever did. It was just one guy. But the production, the songs are top notch. So if you haven't ever heard of the Insiders or the New Radicals and gotten those albums, give them a listen. So you were expecting like the White Album or something like that, weren't you? No, I wouldn't even call the White Album the perfect album. Because I wouldn't either. <laughs> there, there, there's a few in there that I could skip over. There's a few clunkers, I, yeah. I would say. We won't yeah. say which ones. Yeah. So you're on an island. I'm on an island. You get to take one song with you for the rest of the time you're on that island. And you don't know how long you're going to be on that island. What's the song you're going to listen to repeatedly? Do I have beer on the island? <laughs> Just wanted to know what kind of island I'm going to be on, Tony. Uh, one song, Night Moves. Night Great Moves. Song. 
Uh, it's Great just, choice. Yeah. Uh, good stuff. Okay, we're going to get you to play another song, but before we do, yes, sir. I want to hear the funniest story or experience you've had while playing at bars and clubs. I've had uh, a million uh, crazy experiences. Uh, Virginia Beach is a resort area, so tourists uh, have no inhibitions <laughs> whatsoever. Um, so that's, that's always a constant source of crazy for me. Uh, however, I, I, I've been uh, kissed by grown men. <laughs> I've been, uh, you know, all kinds of stuff. Like I haven't this, done that yet. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's it, obviously they were drunk, because uh, you know. Uh, <laughs> anyway, I hope. And and anyway, um, but this is a more recent one. I'll give you this one. Um, this is kind of almost a sad story, but it's kind of a funny story too. So I'm playing in this late night place one time uh, called the Sandbar. And it's up in Newport News in the Hampton Roads area. And uh, it's a 10 to 1 show. So it's a smoking venue. It's, it's got a dive bar-ish vibe, but always packed, playing, doing my thing. And there's this guy, uh, slightly older, somewhere between my age and your age. And he's really into the music. Wonderful, great. So I talked to him in a break. How you doing? Da, 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 da. I'm gonna tell he's inebriated. No worries. So I go back and I play, and I'm continuing on. Now he moves closer, and he sits probably ten feet away from me, and he's really into it. I mean, he's really into it. And he he stands up and he starts clapping and dancing, and I notice that his jeans. Um, They've got an interesting denim wash to them. <laughs> oh, and as I look closer, I realize this guy has pissed himself. <laughs> and I've never seen anybody do that before in a bar. And now everybody's looking at him, you know, everybody's laughing. And he's bringing attention to himself. Yes, he is. And he has no, he has no qualms. I mean, he's just going for it. So I've never experienced this before, and I'm a little uncomfortable by it. You know, I'm made a little uncomfortable by it. And I'm thinking, what? Nobody's doing anything. I mean, nobody's doing anything. So I stop the show, and I go over to the guy who's running the sound and say, um, we need to do something about Homeboy over here. He, he obviously needs a little help. Something's got to give. And he's like, okay, I'll go talk to the manager or whatever. So I go back, and I start playing, waiting for something to happen, waiting for them to escort this guy out or whatever, give him a ride. So I'm playing on the song. Nothing's happening. He's still up there jiggling and making a puddle. He's making a puddle at this point. So um, I, I stopped the show again. I'm like, what's going on to my, the sound guy? And he's like, oh, well, they cut him off. They're not going to serve him anymore. I said, he's standing there in a puddle pit. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Son's got to get. So I said, all right, that's enough. So we, we got to goober this guy home. Nobody's willing to Uber this guy home. Nobody's like, I, I don't have Uber. All of a sudden, nobody has Uber. Right, right, right. right. Like, so I'm like, all right, so I, I, the entertainer of the evening, call a cab. Cab comes. Cab won't just take him. They got to have me with him in order to pay for to take him home. So now I stop the whole show. I give my guitar to another musician who's in the audience. He starts playing. I am now cab riding this guy home. Cab driver won't let him sit in the front seat. He's got to lay down in the back of the SUV that this guy's driving. So now his piss-laden self is laying down in the back of the seat. Now we're driving off to his place. He lives about two or three miles away. We get there. He says, I live over there. We drive over there. We let him out. He starts walking. I'm like, what the hell are you doing? I get out. He's like, uh, I thought I lived around here. I'm not sure. It is the middle of the night. It's 1, 1 15 at night. I'm in a strange neighborhood with a guy full of piss, doesn't know where he's at, doesn't even hardly know his name. I'm supposed to be back in Sandbar playing music. Anyway, we got him home eventually. And on the ride home, the old cab driver and I just just shook our heads. <laughs> I'm like, is that one of the craziest things you've ever seen? He's like, no, but it's up there. <laughs> so I don't know how funny that is, but that was truly an experience I hope I'll never have again. Did you have to play more when you got back? No, I was, was done by that okay. point. 
Um, and, you know, the night was kind of a wash, man. I had to, you know, pay the sound guy. I had to pay the other musicians who were playing in my place. And But you took care of a guy that needed your help. I did. Where did it go? Saints. <laughs> no, I, uh, but anyway. Listen, brother, it was good having you on the show. Thank you so much. So one more time for the audience, how can they follow you on Facebook or anywhere else that they can keep track yes. of what you're doing? All right. Facebook, Joe Heilman Music. I have a page. Don't go to my personal page. Uh, go to the music page because I'm going to be shutting that personal page down probably in a few months. Uh, go to the music page, Joe Heilman Music, Facebook, Instagram, Joe Heilman Music, and then uh, website, JoeHeilman.com, H-E-I-L-M-A-N. And uh, what this guy's doing is amazing for local music and for musicians in general, and he ought to be given a medal. Yeah, so, I don't thank know about you, that. That's my pleasure. So, again, <laughs> thank you, buddy. one more song from me, brother. All right, no worries. Okay. Thanks for joining us here on Music Fanimal on Fanimal Radio. Every night I sit in silence and I listen to the sound of my heart gently beating. Wonder what it takes to get ahead. And wondering what I did to fall behind Cause what it looks like in my head Ain't what it is in no real life In a working man's dream It's always the next day So every night Push it hard to the limit Got a dream That keeps me going Minute by minute by minute, yeah And I see it now through the years Where I went right, where I went wrong Am I paying for my sins? Or am I right where I belong in a working man's dream? It's always the next day yeah. in a working man's dream. Should I go or should I stay? Lord, keep me going is all I pray. Keep me steady until I find my way in a working man's dream. Mm. It's always the next day in a working man's dream. Should I go or should I stay? In a working man's dream.